A few months ago, I decided to declare war on my World of Warcraft guild. Now, you might be thinking, but why, Pint? I thought you were a good boy. Well, I'm gonna tell you the arduous sin they committed, what they did to incite my divine wrath. They didn't give me this sword, and I want it. Back in Phase 1, this was one of the most sought-after items in Molten Core. Well, you know, after after Toep and Mana Igniting Core and, and Ring of Spellfire and Choker. Mm. But Mageblade is clearly the best, because look, it's a sword. It, it, it sparkles. Now I know, I know. It's a reasonable drop rate, and even warriors are getting it now. But somehow, after a whole year in Classic, this item has still evaded my poor little gnome. So who is to blame? Is it just unlucky? Is it just unfair? Is this video just an elaborate presentation for why I feel entitled to loot? So here's my guild history. At the launch of Classic, I joined a nifty little guild while I was leveling and was very set on my endgame goals. Pump, big numbers, pump, big damage, damage, loot, loot and gear, loot and gear, yes, yes, power. And I hope to make some friends along the way. And you know, once I got to 60, I was pumping just fine and I had already made plenty of real homies. But the loot was about to take a turn for the worst. Now the first mage blade that dropped went to a giga pumping Chad Warlock. This guy was trying to stack as many world buffs as he could by like week 4. And he watched anime, so he was probably the main character of the raid, N not me. <laughs> so no complaints there, right? Well that was until, you know, someone got made officer and decided to- oh! I'm gonna leak the loot priority, haha. <laughs> and you know, it's a good thing they leaked it, because the top two people on Prio for Mageblade were Paladins. Okay, well, uh, let's see where I am. <laughs> Pint, fuck this guy. I'm never gonna give him any loot. I hate him. He's like Gnome Hitler. I fucking hate Pint. So yeah, turns out my GM fucking hated me because of my epic YouTube gaming channel. Or maybe he hated the fact that I'd tell people to subscribe to Pint in, in raids. <laughs> and he believed that my behavior was egotistical and virgin-like, which I can't disagree with. Between the constant lying, the two-hour MC clear times, and the numerous e-girl scandals, me and the boys figured it was time to jump ship to a new guild. By now, I had gone four months without Mageblade, and my first guild disbanded later that week. But I am an optimistic gnome and can look at the future with a positive eye. I am sure in my new guild, Serenity, there will be no problems, and things will be completely different, and I will definitely get the items I want. Credit where it's due, the leadership in Serenity was pretty good, but at the time they operated on a rolling system that, you know, I figured what could be more fair than Lady Luck? It seems pretty unlikely you're gonna go super long without getting anything. Twelve more weeks without getting my guiding moonlight. I saw freshly capped 60s get it on their first molten core, but huh, I can't take it out on Serenity, it's just unlucky, right? After all, they did change the loot rules after, but it didn't hurt any less. To them, it was just an unlucky hot streak of not getting any loot, but for me it had been more than eight months without getting a very specific item that I'd been pumping very hard to try and earn. The psychological iceberg of pent-up entitlement was about to tip. So, I decided I wasn't going to take it anymore and I quit the game to play that video game made for children where you grind every day in hopes for some arbitrary, random, mostly cosmetic improvement. Animal Crossing New Horizons, which I'll admit was kinda just like the gaming equivalent of rebound sex, so I fucking stopped kidding myself and came back to Azeroth. And since WoW Retail had mysteriously vanished after Legion, I decided to come back to Classic and give Serenity one final chance. I made a vow. If I don't get Mageblade right now, I am going to make a Horde tune and gank you all. I left it up to Lord's will, and when no loot from the boss dropped that I needed, the Lord said, Pint, my son. Don't let them hoes treat you bad. Ride up on them bitches and stomp them the fuck out. Now I ain't no bitch. Okay, well maybe I'm kind of a bitch, but I'm not a bitch when it comes to loot. Your fate is sealed. Prepare to die. Well boys, let me tell you. There's only a few things more sweet than Mageblade, and revenge is one of them. 
You get what you fucking deserve. Bang. Meet Pont, my second mage in my little side projects for the past few weeks. Look at how sad she is. It's because she doesn't have Mage Blade. I'd sit on this tune getting boosted through dungeons by my absolutely new chad of a guild who actually love and respect me. After taking about two weeks to get to level 40, I decided to go fucking sicko mode on them and use my full power. Mage be nimble, mage be quick, mage level fast and suck your dick. I started off in Zulfarak doing a newfound zombie farm and was getting about 140,000 XP per hour. No, 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 this, is, this isn't cheating, this is completely fine, what are you talking about? Whilst my friend was leveling like a normal fucking person, getting about 25,000 per hour. What a fucking casual, ugh! Wait, why am I sheeped? Hello? What? <gasps> Hi! Oh my god! In only about 10 hours of gameplay, I had gone from level 40 to level 55. But oh shit! My guild's doing a molten core, and I'm level 55. So I need to get attuned and put this puppy in the f full gear. So with the help of a demigod warlock who is unfazed by solid matter, I managed to get my molten core attunement just in the nick of time. Now in this molten core, my guild actually let me roll on loot under the pretense that I would hit 60 within the next week. I received a mediocre belt, a comfortable pair of mittens, and one of the best, most sought-after rings a mage can get in the whole game. And I couldn't even equip any of it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm definitely in the right guild. From there I made my way to Zul Guru, where I opted to beat my head against a brick wall for fucking hours on end because I'm too stubborn, I will get this eventually, I- FUCK! Until my skill prevailed and I was getting about 300,000 XP per hour, which is quite literally the fastest leveling method in the entire game, bringing me from level 58 to 60 in about 90 minutes. If my last video didn't convince you to play mage, these fucking leveling speeds should. Now I could finally equip my epic items. Wow! I look the exact fucking same! Unfortunately, I couldn't make it to raid the next week, so one of my friends gave me some extremely wise advice. Pint, you should start a GDKP, also, uh, you are cool. Now, if you don't know what a GDKP is, essentially everyone bids on items for gold, and then all of that gold is divided amongst all the raid members at the end of the raid. Now, seeing as I'm playing on an American server, I figured I'd embrace the culture a little bit and indulge in one of the country's oldest traditions. Violent capitalism. So I got some of my friends together and I made a nifty little discord and I started spamming trade chat more than any of my competitors like the anime villain I am. Anytime a mage would whisper me, I'd go to their Warcraft logs and check if they needed any of the gear that I needed. And if they did, well, we'd be conveniently full on mages. How unfortunate. And somehow, by the time Raid came around, we had multiple Thunder Fury wielders, a Scarab Lord, and a High Warlord all in the raid ready to go. After a home run from Gar and a Shazra Shinobi, morale was still looking high and some pretty swanky items had dropped. Oh. We defeated Ragnaros the Fire Lord and it was time to let the Vultures feast. I got a nice pair of Yeezys for pretty cheap, I got some sweet new gloves to finish up my 3 set, and won the tier 2 pants at a hearty 75 gold. After the rogues had finished bidding on their second-hand eagle bloodfang pants, You are not a chad. Oh damn. We decided it was time to start auctioning the most coveted of items. My feet picks! <laughs> Hold on. You just looked at my feet. Wait, wait, do you feel that? It's the cold unblinking eyes of your ISP, hackers, and the Queen of England. But worry not, my dear viewer, because with ExpressVPN, you can keep all of your activity hidden and encrypted, so that neither Her Majesty nor anyone else can see what you're doing online. Now you can watch all of those Felix makeup tutorials you've been wanting to watch without anyone knowing. It's okay. Your secret's safe with me. But that's not all. I know you have plenty of time to catch up on all those Netflix shows while you wait for Blizzard to fix Shadowlands PvP. What's that? The hip new show is region locked and you can't watch it? Well, with ExpressVPN, you can change your location with just one click and watch any show from anywhere in the world. Look at how easy it is. Even a mage could do it. Let's see, what do you guys like? Oh, okay. 
So I decided to watch the critically acclaimed anime Japan anime, anime movie, Mary and the Witch's Flower, which is only available in the US. But with ExpressVPN, I was able to change my location and watch the whole thing without a problem. And you know, I gotta say, I quite liked it. Wait a minute. This is copyright infringement. Expect to be hearing from my lawyer. Find out how you can get three months free by clicking the link in the description box below at expressvpn.com slash pint. Back to the video. Thanks to my Asmongolding, which is, yes, now a verb, I have been receiving hefty stimulus packages from simps and e-girls alike. And this allowed me to purchase the Talisman of Ephemeral Power for only 700 gold, which I could have spent on at least 1400 Night Elf lap dances, so uh, maybe it was a waste of money. <laughs> the Azure Song Mageblade. I laid down hard with a fat 100. <laughs> I know none of these other motherfuckers need this shit. I made sure of it. And that's how I got my Azure Song Ma Wait, wait, no! What the fuck, dude? You're a warrior! I know what this is. This guy's trying to bid me up so I end up paying more gold. But I can't afford this, man. I... I give up. Wait. Oh. Oh. Don't say anything. I won't. Oh, oh. <laughs> Maybe socialism has its merits, after all. Punt. As the righteous, upstanding, obviously good guy Alliance Gnome that I once was, I must admit, the dark side had clearly wormed its way into my heart. No longer was I the small gnome you've all come to know and love. Now I had become a big, fat, stinky Zug Zug. And since Horde are clearly the bad guys in World of Warcraft, it was time for me to claim my vengeance. Nay! Justice. I figured Serenity would be my perfect target, so what dastardly plan could I conjure? <laughs> simple, really. Hit him with the oldest trick in the book. A goblin sapper charge and some AoE damage from a few mages can wipe an entire raid in seconds. So I had a team to assemble. First of all, set up a shadow discord and get all of your mage friends in there. Set up a certain time and place to meet. Get an alliance tune to kill us in a very specific spot so that our bodies are hidden, but we can still res right where Serenity would be. But let's not forget the most important piece of the puzzle. My good friend Bradshaw. Bradshaw still raided with Serenity and thus would be my man on the inside. He would tell me what layer they were on, because back then layers were still a thing, but you know, they've since removed them, but you know, they were, they were back then, it's old footage, uh. So the night came. And half the mages on the roster didn't fucking show up, but that's okay. Cause we were all there at the gates of AQ. Ready to, um, <clears throat> dunk on them hoes. We see them on the horizon, and suddenly, all of my hardships, my pain, my suffering. Finally, a shot at redemption. A shot at justice! So yeah, we only killed like three people, but one of those people was Kitiara, who was usually Serenity's top pumping warrior. But he died on the first boss, so the fact that I killed him doesn't matter. So, the next day I finished up a GDKP and I'm going to turn in my items when I see Serenity is summoning people on the roof to get their ZG buff. Well, I still have a couple sappers in my inventory, what if I just... <laughs> After getting my ass promptly beat, my guild talks about needing some backup at the gates of AQ while they summon. I figured Serenity's raid time would be soon, so I head over to help out. My guild zoned into AQ, and shortly after, Serenity arrived at the gates, which I proudly defended to my extremely dying breath. 
Not gonna lie boys, felt kinda humiliated at this point. Despite my later run in with Serenity being pretty coincidental, I presume they took it as an act of further aggression. So I decided to embrace my meme even further. All shall kneel beneath my, uh, my foot. Witness me! Uh, oh. Oh. So they kicked me from the guild discord, and I don't know man, maybe it wasn't worth it. Leveling a whole other character? Crying about not getting given- <laughs> Fuck you, nah, fuck that. This is the only fun I can have in this fucking game anymore. Creating my own roleplay PvP experience is really fun. <laughs> I'd recommend it. Whether your character is Orkman McZuggyZug, who terrorizes the lobbies of Duskwood, or Sir Chad, the guy that PvPs without a chestplate and flexes after every kill. Making a name for yourself with a fun PvP gimmick and a bit of a story is, in my opinion, one of the most fun things you can do in Classic. Because in the end, the only thing better than killing strangers online is killing your friends. I don't hate Serenity, I just... I just want bloodshed. You think my conquest would be so easily thwarted by feelings? My friend, if I was going to give up so easily, I'd have already done it by now. This was only the beginning. Soon I would begin my training with some of the most distinguished PvPers on the server, such as Wukul. Slowly my power grew, and I gained some mad clout in the white main PvP community. I would make my faction proud. I'd already killed a few at the gates of AQ, so all I had to do was hunt down the rest of them and drive them into the ground like the dogs they are. Loktar, oh, wait, n uh, I mean, for the alliance, uh... Kill number one, Kitiara, again, cause, cause he was online, so... I head over to Booty Bay with a mage pal to pump some frost bolts into him. He pops shield wall, but unfortunately, that's not enough to save him from the fact that warriors, upon entering combat with a mage, are clinically diagnosed with erectile dysfunction, swiftly followed by deleting your character and turning you gay. I even managed to get a few bites in before we made our great escape. I'm passing BM right now, my dude. Kill number two, and Zalia. I track him down to Eastern Plaguelands and I start hunting. I find him and clap his human female cheek several times. We have an epic chase scene which ends in him unfortunately dead yet again, followed by him taking res sickness and porting. Mwah. I decide to call it a night and I snuggle into bed feeling great about myself and sleep without an ounce of remorse. I log on the next day and who do I find? Anzella. Oh, but he's AFK. I, I couldn't kill a man without him being here. I'll just lower his health so that when he comes back, he can see my face before he eats the dirt. Feels pretty good to camp someone who has better gear than you. But eventually I got bored and moved on when I was told by Branchul that Anzella didn't know who I was and also didn't really speak English so he couldn't understand my incessant shit talking. <laughs> now I already knew this was gonna take a while. So I thought back to my training and remembered the ancient technique passed down through generations. Young Pint, today I teach you the art of having more people on your team. So I began recruiting a valiant set of knights to do my bidding. I would be the Twitch Eagle streamer, and they, my humble chat mods. I'd reward them with 10 gold per kill on a shout out in my next video, so now the whole world knows that you guys are fucking cheap clout chasers, lamau. And of course Serenity saw the bounty that I'd placed on them. Some would say it lacks subtlety, but I'd say it's an alpha gamer move. So, one late night in Hinterlands, my first pupil, Chilbra, head out to scoop up a couple kills on Shinari and he even cannibalized after. God, he makes me so proud. But he didn't get the kill on the Thunder Fury tank, so I'm gonna have to bump him down to an A minus. Still, that's two kills. Also, he killed Laser Chicken, but I, I don't know. I don't know who that is. So next up, Melandra. After getting a sloppily screenshotted kill on Angelzor, she did manage to get a tasteful one shot on Marty McFarty. And finally, Viscount. My right hand man and my tier 3 sub. This guy leveled a horde tune just to help kill Serenity. He camped Silithus all day and night. And this guy had more kills on Serenity than me. Dude, he, he's dangerous. So I head over to Silithus to help him camp one night and... I see t -Lol. This guy. This guy who laughed at me. We hit him with some pyroblasts until eventually he flies out of town, never to be seen again. 
Until Viscount pulls a 400 IQ move of predicting that he was going to Tanaris, we land in Gadget Sand and see who other than T Lol, who of course runs to the inn to use his hidden technique of logging off and shit talking in Discord once again. We waited in the inn for him to log back on for a whole 50 minutes before we decided to pack it in for the night. And unfortunately, this was the beginning of a pattern with Serenity. The next day, I tracked down another member to Blackrock Depths, and I waited outside for 40 minutes, but he never came out. Even Melandra, in hopes to get some extra credit, and some boys from the guild camped the portal room to catch Serenity as they ported in. And while we spilt plenty of Alliance blood, none of it was Serenity. I even took my massacre to Ironforge, but still, no Serenity. Every day, the amount of people online in Serenity dwindled. I knew my time was limited, and in my desperation, I put up all the money that I had left. 1,000 gold to anyone who wiped Serenity. Chilbra and Riscount decided to plan the final assault. They gathered a much larger kill squad than last time, completely ready to kill Serenity once and for all to claim the 1,000 gold bounty. But... There they were, outside of AQ. It's been three weeks since Serenity has not been seen raiding. The raid leader left the guild amongst some others. Was it unrelated? Does having an angry LARPing gnome biting at your guild's ankles cause some damage over time, or am I giving myself too much credit? Who knows. So, is this it? Did I win? <sighs> the past few weeks have been some of the most fun I've had in Classic. The role-playing, the companionship, the enemies. Serenity may have died, but not in the way I'd hoped. When the ranking system and the raid buff culture offered no entertainment, Serenity was there to keep me playing. To give me a reason to log on, a reason to go out in the world. But here I stand, with everything I ever wanted, and yet... At what cost? I have Mageblade, and although my slaughter was shorter than I'd hoped, here I am, missing Serenity. Because after all, what is the hunter without the hunt? It's me, Pint, from Dancing. Now, most of you people aren't subscribed, so if you like this content, please do it. Also, uh, Patreon, Patreon, uh, previews, tutorials, blah, 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 blah. And I'm probably gonna stream, so uh, follow my Twitch, please. Anyways, I'd like to thank all of Serenity, and especially Marvy the GM for being a good sport throughout this whole thing. I'd also like to thank Sweppy for some of the art you've seen in this video. This is their Twitter. Uh, also, my hard drive failed, and I moved out of my parents' house, my life's falling apart. Bye.